Hey, Rakoma. How are you guys? Good. Yeah, how are you? Good. How are you? Uh, first question Who are you and what do you do? Go first. Yeah, we are Rakoma, uh, or part of Rakoma. Uh, my name's Sean. I play guitar. My name's Glenn. I play guitar and sing. Cool. Well, thank you guys for being here today. Uh, your new band manager, Shannon, was actually the one who reached out to set up this interview, and that's exciting. You guys have a new manager. You've had her for, what, like two or three weeks now? Yeah, yeah I it's... think about that time, yeah. It's cool. Awesome. I, w- I want to ask about that, because I'm assuming before she hopped on board, you guys were just doing everything yourselves. Is that that's right? That's true, yeah. Yeah. So, so when she came on, was there anything you told Shannon immediately that, like, we really want to do this, start working on it, or, or are there other things she's able to bring to the table that you guys felt you weren't capable of or weren't, just weren't interested in yourselves? Yeah, I think it was a mix of both like i guess we could technically have been more capable but like it's so hard to do like the music side of 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 things when you have to do the logistical side um it's just really hard to balance that and at a certain point you just want to write music and and be able to do that and i feel like we were missing a lot of opportunities um like this for instance she she reached out to you that's something probably we wouldn't wouldn't have done because we were just trying to keep our head above the water um (laughs) But yeah, I mean, having Shannon has changed everything, I think, for us. Yeah, it's gone from like just that trying to like manage everything coming at us versus like having someone who can help us manage, but then also look into things that we wouldn't have looked into previously. Yeah. Pretty much what you said. Yeah. <laughs> you sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really cool. Um, and trying to do a little research about you guys before you come on. I, of course, uh, listen to the music, but listen uh, to a few interviews. And I heard one interview where you guys talked about your beginnings in music and you really only referred to kind of playing music in youth groups and band class mm-hmm. at school. Is Rakoma both your guys first like real kind of indie bands? I had a prior uh, band in New Jersey called Sell the Boat, um, but that kind of fizzled out and yeah, I came out here just to kind of change it up, leave New Jersey and play music still. This is my first proper band project. I've, I had a friend in California where I'm from who I played music with casually, but this is kind of the first opportunity I've had to play with more than one person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Well, Glenn, so I'm curious, like the different, so you, were you writing songs in your previous band too? Yeah, I, I wrote some, some of this. Yeah. yeah. How, did you find that the style of songs you were writing or just the arrangements and other genres and grooves that you're making, like, does the people you're playing with impact the songs? Are you, do you feel like when Rakoma started, you started to cater your songs like, oh, these players are good at these things. Let's fit this move. Or are your songs just kind of your songs no matter how they're presented no i think they're definitely shaped by everybody i come to the table with what i have and i would say i'm the least important person in the band in terms of like what i come to the table with is like a shitty representation of what it should be and everybody who actually i've worked with in both bands have been able to been real musicians and (laughs) shape that around my weird thought process so yeah it's totally like the individuals make it so different and it's been two different projects and um both of them have been awesome to work with but i'm really excited about Rakoma and what we're doing now and i think this is exactly where i should be yeah sean you were you were shaking your head that was overly humble i couldn't couldn't handle that (laughs) now what glenn brings to the table is (laughs) definitely awesome and but i could i could definitely say that we all yeah contribute a little bit of ourselves to to what becomes the songs Rakoma songs. Yeah. yeah, you seem to contribute a lot, Sean. In addition to like playing guitar in the band, you seem to be kind of in charge of most of the home recording, the engineering, the tracking. Is that right? Yeah, I would say before Spencer joined, it was that kind of role was more my role. But actually, Spencer is very talented at all that stuff too. So having him in the band has been really cool because yeah. he's brought a lot of new ways of thinking about recording and and mixing and stuff that i i wouldn't have thought of so we're good collaborators with that with that role i think is that something you guys were looking for before you joined the band or just kind of and he just kind of came in and had this skill set (laughs) happy accident yeah we we were looking for him to play bass um and then just found out that he had those skills which was awesome spencer actually makes really cool electronic music yeah on his own which 
is impressive because I know nothing about making electronic music. Yeah, and I'm also like not the hugest fan of electronic music. No offense to any, anyone, but like his his shit's like really like it's, good. it's interesting. It's yeah. actually like I want to listen to it. Yeah. So. Well, what other genres are you guys interested? Because like I was listening to yeah your first single from 2017, Corner Ghost, all the way to mm-hmm. your new album, then the most recent single, uh, Fortify, and I was kind of struck listening to it all like quickly back to back that. Mm-hmm. It seems you guys kind of knew right from the first song what you wanted to sound like and nailed it. There's a consistency to kind of the sound and the moods. Um, yeah, are there other forms of music you'd like to kind of play around with and experiment with? Ooh, I think tonally, like maybe not so much like writing wise. I mean, I guess you you find influences from every everything, but tonally, I think there's a lot of cool like sounds from like hip hop and R and B and that we all like together really enjoy um yeah i think that's kind of the other genre side of maybe not what we make but what we really enjoy is Rakoma. yeah what's cool is i think we all have different different uh genres outside of our genre that we tend to pull things from whether it's like with the tones or or you know certain chord voicings or things like that so there's a lot of music I'm I'm really interested in mm-hmm. exploring more for new stuff, hip hop and R and B being some of them. Yeah, it just it just feels so different than what we're doing, and it's so refreshing. It's so it's so great to just like turn your brain off and enjoy that because it's not anything I could ever really make well, and to hear like you know those artists do that, it's so it's just great, it's just wonderful to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> totally, I relate to that. Like, there's so many different types of music where i know like i sound nothing like that um and if i even try to do what they do i wouldn't know how to do it so yeah yeah, it is cool just kind of yeah for sure but it you're still inspired by i'm sure so many lyrical themes they're covering may leak in or little bits they may have some guitar lick like oh i like that so you do apply little sounds you hear but it ends up being your own thing for sure yeah yeah. nailed it nice um yeah so the local community our local music community really hasn't been able to be as active as we want due to COVID. Uh, I I've been really pleased to see all the different kind of different live stream shows pop up around Seattle. I know you guys have played on some of them Mm. in addition to appearing on some of them. You also started your own, you had a limited run of, uh, the dream stream shows. Uh, what made you guys want to do that? Did you find it was different than any other live stream shows going around or what what was your experience making those? Yeah, I think, First off, I want to say you're a great interviewer. <laughs> You've really done your research, and it's really cool to just, I know. I appreciate like, that. Like, talk to you. So I, I appreciate don't think that. I've heard a mention of Corner Ghosts in a very long time, yeah, even among you, the band members. Yeah, I'm very in awe of, like, <laughs> the, the research you've done. Yeah, uh, appreciate just want to put that. that out there before I answer the question. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, the dream stream, so we started it. I guess we knew it was kind of the trajectory of what we had to do um, in terms of not like necessarily survival, but to stay relevant and to, 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 you know, to keep Rakoma's name kind of in circulation. So we started, you know, we wanted to get some bands that we knew that we had admirations for and um, kind of play, play with them. But then it quickly um, kind of changed a bit um, after the uh, death of George Floyd. And we realized it was really a good time for us to sit back and kind of not play and just learn Um, so we had a lot of like really cool black artists, um, come on and really just show us what they do and explain their stories. Um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really cool time to, to just not play and shut up and just listen and, and learn. And, um, it's totally an on the spot question, but when you had them on and you, like you said, are listening and learning, was there anything specific you learned? I learned a lot about different creative process that you know certain artists would go through and it was interesting for me to talk about that kind of stuff with artists of different genres and you know totally different backgrounds and find out that like there's a lot of commonalities there yeah um that was a takeaway for me yeah i think i learned like black women speak like i knew about Mm -hmm. the the really messed up things that that the black community goes through, but to really hear it firsthand, you know, just 
someone being afraid to to call the police on their domestic partner who's abusing them because they didn't want their you know abuser to get shot or killed um it's something you obviously like through my like privilege scope of things like i've heard of and i i i put some weight into it but to actually like sit down and have someone tell you that and really like take that in was a very profound moment for me i uh, can totally relate to that it's kind of it's abstract when you're just reading articles or seeing pictures through the scope of a computer screen or on a phone mm -hmm. but when you're talking to someone and really hearing their voice and looking in their eyes when you're yeah. seeing it, you can hit them more yeah where i grew up in missouri i i moved out here just a few months before the Michael Brown mm -hmm. uh, stuff happened in Ferguson, Missouri. And it was kind of crazy to see, like see news footage of play. Like I would see news footage of whatever, I, I, whatever, maybe a mm -hmm. burning building or something. And then I would go on Facebook and see my friends who were in that neighborhood posting their cell phone photos of the same thing. And like, Oh, this is real. And then hearing their stories about being there yeah. during it. And that's happening more and more everywhere across the country. So that's yeah. cool. You guys were able to like, yeah, give an outlet to those voices and yeah, that whole thing. I think technology is really great for that. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff that comes with technology, but the fact that we can connect and understand the problems that we have and be able to fix that, I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. We're trying to, you know, lend our hand in helping fix that i guess no i'm glad you guys took the initiative to yeah set those up that's a really cool thing mm -hmm. um yeah when i, I want to ask about kind of how you record and produce your stuff because sean you were saying that you guys do it a lot of it I, and you've you've gone to studios a couple of times but a lot of it's just at home uh in your basement and uh yeah sean you do most of the tracking i saw like on the most recent single that elliot assisted with some of the engineering and spencer mix and mastered it um, do you find it difficult to kind of be objective when producing yourselves? I, I know that like when I work with my band, there's a lot of hard decisions and, like which vocal take do we use? Um, which pickup position do we track the guitar in? E even little things like panning the instrument on the left side or right side. Do we double track this thing? Um, and for me, it's kind of like when you're responsible from everything from the song creation all the way through to the recording execution, it, it feels like things can only go wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm curious, how, how do you guys handle those decisions as, as a band? Are, are you two kind of the ones with final say? Do you do things by committee? Do you run things by friends? Like, oh, what do you think? This or this? Kind of a mix of all of that. I mean, we don't have the final say. Yeah. I would say like we we really, as a group, try to be as collective as possible with decisions um and what's great is we can all sort of take our egos out of things and really try to listen for what what is best for the song i think when it comes to production stuff the hardest is like the first few decisions mm -hmm. and then once you kind of get the ball rolling you figure out almost like creative problem solving and those first few decisions being like the bpm of the song or yeah like, or because that that locks you in for the whole thing totally that kind of thing or like you know setting up the first mics for the first performance of you know the basic track and figuring out what the tone of that is and what what kind of energy that should you know evoke but once you have something there it's easy to kind of or easier to kind of fit things mm -hmm. around it and and go go from there yeah yeah, I think we're pretty blessed in terms of how we work together. I think we, if one of us doesn't like it, we have this like way of going about it where we have to find a compromise where, and usually the compromise is completely different and we all are stoked on it. Yeah. So I don't think, I can't even really remember a moment where we've just like been like, no, we're keeping that in despite somebody not liking it. Yeah, we've always, like you said, try to work to find a solution. Yeah. That makes everyone happy. <laughs> I mean, it's like, could be days, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's worth it. Cause in the end, I mean, everybody's happy and we have to listen to these songs and play them and the music's always better for it. Yeah. For well, sure. and your sound is kind of natural enough. I'm, you guys probably have these songs pretty well rehearsed and you know what you're doing by the time you record or is there, I'm, there probably <laughs> is some discovery in the recording process. Like as soon as you're in the studio, like, Oh, well we don't have a Mellotron live, but let's put it on. <laughs> Yeah, I would say with this front room specifically, the the core of all the tracking and performances were done at our house. 
in Mount Lake Terrace when we were all living there. Um, and so we did that chunk of it ourselves. But what was nice was our friend Mike Vernon Davis was able to give us a little bit of studio time in Hall of Justice. And that's where, you know, having access to all the bells and whistles in there, inevitably you find like, oh, like, yeah, like you said, Mellotron would sound really cool in this transition or, and we kind of just decided to sprinkle that stuff in to the songs that were more well rehearsed and well mm -hmm. thought out. Um, but who's to say like how we're going to tackle that next time around. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, that was a, a fun process of having these songs that we kind of had thought were, you know, mostly done and then going and realizing there was more things we could mess with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Music as an act of discovery. It's the best way to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk lyrics a little bit. Glenn, is that all of you or do you kind of run things by the band? I'm for the, yeah, <laughs> for the most part it's me. And then, I mean, if I'm having trouble with a certain part, I'll ask. Um, but yeah, I, I would say majority of it is just me doing that. You put out enough releases. Do you find there are overarching lyrical themes you keep on coming back to? Yeah, I actually was thinking about that the other day. I feel like I'm kind of a, a hack in terms of maybe using the same lyric or, or whatnot um, several times. but Oh, like the same rhymes and things? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I really like <laughs> I really like time and mind. And, like, it's so corny and so generic, but, like, somehow that slips its way in and it's, like, I don't if it's know. honest, I think it works. Yeah, I think it's something everyone can relate to. I never to. noticed that. <laughs> I mean, it's something like I'll if I go and have to sing, if I like sing a phrase, it'll somehow squeeze its way in. I'm like, oh god, you're such a one-dimensional <laughs> man, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough writing lyrics for sure. Is, is it an intentional act? I know a lot of people when they write songs, it very rarely do I hear someone say. All right, I have these chords. Now I'm going to write the lyrics about this subject. A lot. Of, it's kind of a stream of consciousness at yeah. first, and words just kind of spill out, and then you might make sense of them later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, th yeah. is that kind of how it is for you? I mean, sometimes, sometimes I'll actually like I'll get a a verse done, and I'll be like, "That's sick," and then I'm kind of like, "Fuck, I'm screwed." Now I have to <laughs> figure this whole thing out and this sit with this thousand piece puzzle. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I mean. It's like, like you're saying, sometimes things just happen and sometimes you have to sit with it for eight days and then submit it to everybody. And then everyone's like, maybe not that, you know? So it, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a, a, a way of writing lyrics. I wish I did. <laughs> if you know a way, just let me know. <laughs> I def no, I have the cheesiest, weirdest, most obtuse lyrics. Ever. I, I leave most of that to our singer. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, uh, we'll, we'll work with each other a little bit. And, yeah. and some, some songs are all my lyrics. Some songs are all hers. I, yeah. I like it. It seems weird that some of my favorite ones are the ones where we work on them together. Yeah. I would, you would think that may not work because it's kind of two competing voices and narratives. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, when you're bouncing them off someone else, you can kind of... The, the stakes are raised a little bit where you want to impress your bandmates and come yeah. up with something... And it's also yeah. helpful when it's like, they're like, I actually genuinely like it. It like solidifies it. And you're like, okay. Cause you're like on the edge of it. I, I don't know how I, I wouldn't be able to like write all the music and do all that. Cause I too self-conscious. I think I need somebody to be like, that's good. And then I'm like, okay, you're right. It is. Good. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, well, I want to get to show and tell before too long, before we get to show and tell proper, I want to, oh, let, let's talk about the newest thing. You guys have vinyl. Oh yeah. Uh, you guys just put out a, is this yeah your first thing you've been able to put out on vinyl? That's a big deal. It yeah. is. Yeah. We were looking forward to it for a long time. We, you know, had been talking about it since our EP came out. So it's nice to finally see our music in that format. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little abstract, loose question, but can you talk about the, why physical releases are important, whether it's just an emotional thing or uh, the business side, like what, when you guys are selling merch at shows, is it like, I, I, I obviously there aren't shows right now to do, but are like t-shirts, a big seller CDs kind of, how, how does, how do physical releases work? Um, I feel like t-shirts are pretty big. Yeah. T-shirts, like yeah, I'm, probably the biggest, yeah. biggest thing. I mean, we haven't obviously done vinyl yet, but we're excited to sell those. I, not even for the like monetary value. It's more just like, 
when someone tells you like great show it's like it's one thing and you're excited but when someone's like i just heard you never like you opened for this band i didn't even want to come to the opener and you guys were awesome can i buy a shirt it's like wow you want to pay 25 dollars you like us that much um that's kind of like the amazing part of merch i think less so the monetary value because it's not like we're ready to buy houses off our, <laughs> our merch we're just surviving and in terms of physical releases i i really like i still really like having a physical copy mm-hmm. of like the albums i love and i actually still really like listening to music like as an album or as a like a whole piece of work from the artists i, lo- I enjoy so i just feel like it's still important to kind of continue that practice <laughs> with our music but you know I, I love seeing bands that i love put out vinyl and put out mm-hmm. physical forms of their music too yeah i agree yeah uh well let's get to show and tell do you guys both have your own individual things or is it this a group item we have two, we have two, two separate, separate things yeah <laughs> let's great uh, whoever wants to start first, Sean first? Or sure, yeah. yeah i'll start mine so i brought this bottle of alcohol <laughs> so this is a coffee liqueur from seattle distilling um on vashon island probably at this point a, a full-on member of Ricoma, because we got this in like 2016 yeah when... yeah so the story is we... oh, you, you got it years ago and it's unopened it's unopened okay so uh, the story is we the name Rakoma comes from Vashon Island. Right. Uh, and we started playing over there. And at a certain point when we were like first starting out the band, we, we got this, inherited this like old Airstream trailer or like one of the, some sort of, it wasn't an Airstream. I, yeah. I it was like an Airstream or some kind of knockoff or something. I don't remember. And we spent like a <laughs> month or maybe longer Too long. gutting this thing to make it a practice space. Uh, because at this point we didn't have anywhere that we could play music. And so we needed a place to like keep this thing on Bastion Island and work on it for an extended period of time and like make a mess, like dump a bunch of stuff out. Uh, And like someone who knew a friend of ours, Paco is the guy who runs Seattle distilling and let us park our trailer on his property at the time. I think mm-hmm. they moved, they did, they moved locations since then. Um, but he was the coolest person. Like let us literally dump trash on his yard and like, <laughs> yeah, he was put up with us playing no, really loud, bad songs. Like our very first. Oh, they were, songs. <laughs> they were real bad songs. Um, well, like yeah so I, I don't mean to interrupt but no, yeah on the it. topic of bad songs like how many did you were you writing and then throwing away before you like how, how many songs then was like all right this is the first one that's good enough to be released it took a while i think yeah but there were that many i feel like <laughs> there was maybe one song that we totally threw away but mostly we just reworked all the songs until we could use them yeah dear brother actually was one of those songs but in a much different form Mm -hmm. uh it probably went through like five or six versions before it became what was on this front room um but i remember we did throw away one song because we were joking about it the other day (laughs) yeah we still play it like we'll just be in practice and we'll just start playing it because it's really bad um yeah so yeah so shout out to them because they (laughs) they listen to some yeah they really put up with us and uh who knows if like rats that came out of that thing are still living on that property. Oh, what yeah. happened to the Airstream? The Airstream. So that's a interesting story too. Cause we sold that thing to a, a wedding photographer couple who maybe drive it around the country now, or maybe they got rid of it. Um, but we were able to use that money to buy like a lot of gear, and stuff. gear that we needed for the band for recording the EP and, yeah, so it worked out. In I think the end. we put like a thousand dollars into it and made three grand or something. Yeah, kind of cool. So that's great. Definitely. But we were also like music. not playing music. We were like <laughs> building out a freaking airstream. It's like, I mean, that's really cool and awesome. But like, we we're trying to make music. I don't know too much. Like, it's kind of is it metal on the inside? I can't imagine that'd be too good acoustically. But oh, it was horrifying. It was, the worst. <laughs> it was like the worst sounding thing. Like I remember our first practice. It was just like everything at the same time in your eardrum 
Um, we had like the full drum kit oh, amps and yeah it was so loud the cymbals were just like screechingly loud it was such a like romantic idea i feel like we were so excited to play the first song and then just like but we were like still just doing our thing you know we we're just yeah. learning and it was fun and it was a good way to like get to know each other too, yeah oh for sure process he didn't tell you about um, the rat the rat shit you should tell him about that. oh my gosh <laughs> that's his story yeah that's there was all. like rat shit all over the floors all in the cabinets we had to rip everything out and it was you know i've said it before but like you're literally going home and showering and you have like black boogers coming out no of it was gnarly it was, horrible. It was like 20 <laughs> years of rat shit yeah and like still and, have there's no way i can really describe it in, in the right way <laughs> there was definitely a couple moments too where we're like getting something out and the rat was living in there and like scurried off like jumped off of yeah us oh yeah ran away it was horrifying, but rough. Um, Hopefully, the symbols like made him run away by the time. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were gone when Hopefully. we played our songs. <laughs> I mean, we did ruin their home. It, it was their habitat for a long for generations. Time. <laughs> Capitalism. <laughs> um, so yeah, Paco was this awesome. Is this awesome guy who helped us out? And so when we were leaving Vashon, we one night we just decided to stop into his um like tasting room and bought this and we haven't opened it because we we always said like oh let's save it for like some pivotal milestone which we don't even really know what that will be <laughs> no i think we'll know it, it's hard we to don't know it what out. it is yeah. but yeah. there'll be a moment where I'll like break that that bad boy yeah out. or we'll just have it forever <laughs> yeah this will be well, like, hopefully the day will come soon where you can yeah like the carrot in front of our head that i think when we're like 55 going. and we've given up on music we'll open it <laughs> right by the time you guys become a classic rock cover band yes <laughs> when um, we when we're playing the county fairs when we're a wedding band that <laughs> sleeps in the airstream that we we made in the wedding but photographer we did taste this i remember it being very good it was very good so I don't, seattle distilling it's very I don't know anything about delicious. coffee liqueur. Does it age well? Is that a thing? I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't think bottle aged is a thing though. So <laughs> either way, I'm gonna enjoy it when it, <laughs> when and if it happens. Well we're gonna take a quick break and then come back with Glenn's uh, show and tell item. Cool. And we're back with Rakoma. Cool. Uh yeah, Sean just shared his great show and tell <laughs> item. This uh as you call it a carrot dangling in front of you, a bottle of liquor <laughs> for when you get the big whatever hit the big milestone for the band uh glenn what do you have oh uh, what i have i was trying to find the funniest uh item in my house Th i these are my favorite this, this is it so this is uh my dad um i have a dog his name's tonto my dad that's perfect my right dad there. painted this he is like about to retire and he's doing painting now um oh that's just 2019 in the corner yes yeah, this yeah. is very recent i actually have the picture um and you'll see why i find it comical no offense uh, but that is the original picture, <laughs> and this is the uh, painting. So it's quite different in terms of. Um, I mean, the colors are there. <laughs> the smile. I, but I he's, a, he's a good painter in terms of like stylistically. It's very unique. I can. Can't. Can you pull up the dog? The the actual picture again. Yes. I'll pull it. I up. think so. It's the teeth are very different. The teeth, and I feel like there's some. The paws. Like this kind of the center in between his eyes, there's a couple just kind of like lines yes. that aren't, it's a little smooth on the painting where just like, yeah. It's quite different. It's, <laughs> it's close. This is closer than what I was expecting based on just the painting. Yeah. It's, I don't, yeah. It's Did not, you, you've had more time with this. Yeah. On, on a grade. Yeah. What would you I give this a grade? I think instantly me and my wife, we fell in love with it. We just thought it was the funniest thing on the planet. It's amazing. I mean... And I'm not knocking his ability. Like, I'm a, no, I could not I'm do that. I'm a horrible painter. Absolutely, like this would be nowhere close to it. It's just like really satisfying to look at. And uh, since then, like my wife has friends who she showed this to, and they actually wanted. Oh, sorry. They wanted to um, get a commissioned painting. They don't know my dad at all, and they got their dog commissioned, and it's um, very hilarious. Even I think even more so than this this picture he might do our next album art <laughs> yeah i kind of there's something about it that's just like really it's great raw and kind of it's great beautiful um but yeah i just i was trying to find the funniest thing that 
maybe me personally found funny, but so did was this a gift to you or somebody, or he just did this, hung it up, and you said you went to your dad's house and like, oh, I'm taking that. That's mine now. No, he like was like, I'm gonna. I, I don't remember if he told us he was gonna pay or just sent it. I think I feel he like just, it just showed up, right? Yeah, I think he just sent it, <laughs> and we were just like kind of like this moment of like i like it but i don't know <laughs> if i like it but i mean it's kind of like you know the coffee liqueur it's getting better with age <laughs> every time you look at it you're just like this is something about this and it, it's cool i don't have much for my dad so it's really awesome that i have this little uh this little token of fun <laughs> i gotta get your dad on this podcast is yeah he, uh are animals his specialty or does he landscapes or people um is he branching out i don't know dogs are a good way to go yeah i think it's funny to do portraits and i i kind of want him to just like become like instagram famous because he's just like this yeah very small little guy from austria he used to yodel um in his village and just is very unassuming and probably hates the idea of being instagram famous and i think that would be so sick <laughs> um and ironic and beautiful let's make it happen serendipitous yeah I feel also, like dogs would be kind of hard to could, like fur can be very detailed and yeah. there's a lot of yeah I yeah he's lucky that this this particular picture doesn't or painting doesn't have a lot of fur this yeah this it's dog, pretty smooth but the other friend we have is just like he kind of looks like a little bat and in the actual real picture maybe not so much but <laughs> yeah Sean I cut you off what were you gonna say oh no I just think like pet portraits are definitely like yeah. the way to go and you don't it's like what it, it's not like a tattoo so it's okay. Like you'd, I would rather have like a really, really like kind of weird take on my pet as a portrait. Definitely. Than like a really dialed in perfect Definitely. portrait. That's just kind of weird. It is a little strange. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just too much. I don't know. So yeah, I think there's a market for him and, uh, you know, well, maybe we'll give him the coffee liqueur. He I could, love He the, could celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I love the freckles. Yes. He did a good job with the eyes. Show you guys again. The eyes are very like Tonto has very blue human like eyes, and those are he did a good job. The paw is very yeah. Maybe the other thing the the eyes are very much one shade of blue. There mm -hmm. isn't like mm -hmm. it doesn't go from light to dark. It's just very stark. These are my eyes. Yes, he does have very electric. Eyes, oh, they they Tonto. stand out in the photo too. <laughs> yeah, but not as much. Not as much. right. <laughs> I don't know how much of an offhand comment that was that he should do the next album cover. Is that a serious consideration? I have definitely down to explore that idea. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think like, yeah, maybe if we did like a side project, that was just fun. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I we mean, should do a song about our pets and have your dad. That would be That great. would be awesome. Yeah. Or, uh, oh, am I remembering? Is there a... A song called Dog Bones. Oh, there is. Yeah. Music yeah. video. Like, have them do a series and just, you can, like, cycle through all the photos. And the you series. heard it here first. Dog <laughs> Bones music video. Glenn's What's happening. <laughs> cool. Um, God, well, this is so much fun to talk to you guys today. Thank yeah, you for being on. You. Last word is yours. Uh, are there yeah, any plugs you want to give, announcements you want to make, anything? Where can people find you? All that stuff. Yeah, we're on streaming services. Um, Check out our website, recomamusic.com. You can check out vinyl and, you know, anything new that we're putting up will be there. Our Instagram, too, Recoma mm. Music. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just want to say thank you. You're thank amazing. You. Thanks, Recoma. Fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, cool. Mitch. Later, everyone. Bye. Sweet. That was dope. Great questions. Yeah, man. man. Oh, thank you. I Seriously, good interview, man.